see everyone that's here with us this morning on this bright and cold beautiful beautiful day Amen. but uh, we do have a couple of announcements we need to bring forward uh, <clears throat> Chancellor Choir will practice on the afternoon of the 28th now the next meeting will be the quarterly administrative council meeting It'll be on the 30th 
please have, if you're over a committee, please have your meeting done a couple of days before the 30th. That way you have everything ready to bring forward for the council meeting. Master Mark will be out of town the next week on the 4th. Uh, the, we have a guest speaker, Robbie Haynes. Uh, he'll be with us. And then on February the 11th is Super, Sun, Super Bowl Sunday. Please bring the canned good to raise, uh, raise awareness of that. Uh, Afterlife training will also be the same day right after church. Pizza will be served. Um, and then also that evening, we will have a Valentine's steak and dinner, steak and gravy dinner here in the OP Fellowship Hall. And then, of course, we don't want to forget Ash Wednesday coming on the 14th of Valentine's Day. Uh, we'll have a service here in the sanctuary at 6. Are there any other announcements we need to bring forward? None? Well, let's, you have anything more? All right. I reckon I do. You know, I always do. I'll try to limit my words today. I need to put a limit on my number of words. But I do have one statement I wanted to make. Good morning, church. Isn't it a great morning to be in God's house? Isn't it a great morning to be somewhere where the heat is working? Can I get an amen? So just a shout out to the trustees, always keeping the heat going and, you know, the TV's going. And we, we really need to, they don't want any praise, but I just appreciate all their work because the TVs are now uh, synced together on one device and we're just thankful for all the work that they do. We want to welcome everybody who's watching here online. We've got eight that are watching this morning online, and sometimes there's more than one around a screen. So we want to say good morning to those folks. One, two, three. Good morning. We miss you in person, but we're glad you are here with us. That's just as uh, relevant today, isn't it? A good day for online church, isn't it? With the, what is it outside? 24 right now? The warm temperature of 24. Aren't y'all glad it went up a little bit from 12 but uh, I think announcements are covered. I don't want to spend too much time on that. I do apologize in advance. I gave you my two weeks notice on uh, being out <laughs> on being out on February 4th. That is not our choice, and, and I don't really like the concept of sports on Sunday morning, but it is what it is nowadays. So we'll be gone on the 4th. Ella has a gymnastics competition at Callaway Gardens. She's really moving up in the world. And uh, so that's where we'll be that morning. 8 a.m. is her competition. So I do hope and pray you'll, you'll uh, still plan to come. Robbie Haynes, who uh, has spoken here before, is going to bring a word for us that day. And everybody seemed to enjoy him. And I, I just pray that he energizes the congregation and uh, calls us back to our purpose. I believe that's it as far as announcements. Did anybody think of something at the last minute? while Rick and I were, were uh, working our way through those announcements. Is everybody good on that? Ed, this is about church announcements. He, yes, sir. No, we're, get, we're getting there. We're going to get there, buddy, soon. Yes, sir. Church announcements. You're good. No worries. No worries. So I think everybody is good. That Ash Wednesday service, we're going to do it a little bit earlier this year because that is Valentine's Day so that you can get to where you need to go, if you're even going anywhere. I don't know, ladies, are you, you know, taking, the, taking your, your husbands out or husbands, <laughs> you, know, you know, whatever you need to do, but I do hope you'll, you'll spend that with us. Let us now prepare our hearts, prepare our minds, and get ready to open our hearts and minds for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, amen? Because I know that He is in this place. Let's take about 30 seconds to shake your neighbor's hand, warm it up. It might be ice cold. You never know. And say, good morning, neighbor. Good morning.
Wajib. Wajib. Go ahead and get uh, cranking over with the worship service. Our first hymn is "This is my This is my Father's World." Him page him number two in the brown <coughs> hymnal, or we'll have it on the wall yeah. behind. Me. Might be a little different than what's in the brown hymnal, but we'll do what's up here. Okay, sound good? Let us stand and praise the Lord. <laughs> This is my Father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres. This is my Father's world, I bless ye not forget and trees and good is fine and heaven and earth be one this is my father's world the battle is not done Jesus who died be satisfied and given on the spheres this is my father's world, then they'll be there forget. Then he'll be died, be no satisfied, and earth and heaven be one. Amen. You know what that means? That means I need to order those new hymnals really quick. Amen. That's what it means. Because you can't trust the slides, and we're going to do that. Those are on, I think they're on back order till the end of February, but we will get that fixed, and I apologize. So uh, that was not in sync, and that's my fault. So what do we got next, Rick? First hymn is hymn number 86. All right. Brown, or on the wall behind Yeah, me. we'll do all four verses. Holy, and holy, holy. We went through this one, didn't we, Kathy? This one's okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Adore thee, 
Casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee, which words and art and evermore. be seated. And the children will come forward for this morning's children. Get our stuff together here. All right, what do we have here, guys? All right. Good morning. Y'all doing okay? Yeah. Anybody looking for a job? Because we need, I need, I'm going to soon be fired from doing the slides. Anybody looking for a job? <laughs> you want to do it, Will? I might, might just hand that over to CC if we'll get together on that and work. work. Usually we're pretty good, but sorry about that, Kathy. I was out of sync today. Y'all ever seen that error message on your internet, out of sync? Have you ever seen that? You've never seen that before when you're trying to sync with your iCloud? That's what, that's what was going on today. I just wasn't, I wasn't in touch with the cloud, you know what I mean, <laughs> with, with God today. So how's things going? It's going good, just kind of okay average. Y'all excited to be here today? Well, I have something to help you out today. If you need, I've been trying to be better this year about taking care of my health. Amen. I actually went to the doctor. I'm here to confess. I went to the doctor January, I think it was January 6th, and I've got to go back February 1st for a physical. Okay. So y'all should be proud of me. That's the first time in quite a while. Okay. But I was amazed It's something that they gave me on the way out. We had a discussion, and I told her what I do, and she said, well, I've got something that you need to take, and it will help you be Christian, see? Because she said, she said that the best vitamin for a Christian is B1. Can I get an amen? Just B1. So here it is. It says right here, be Christian. That's what she prescribed. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that wild? That's what she gave me. But do y'all take good care of your health, and do you take your vitamins every morning, your multivitamin? That's good. That's good. Yeah, those are are B1s. They're B-Christians, yeah. Can you tell me what vitamin, and I need to start taking this one. Do you know what vitamin you might take if you are absent-minded? Hmm, Calvin? Potassium. Why don't snakes, why don't snakes like vitamin C? Hmm? Do you know? Do you know? Because it's, because it's an antihistamine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
That's the truth. Do you know what I... <laughs> oh, yeah, I told... I said I wouldn't tell any more jokes at the end of last year. You remember? But this is a new year. It's a new year, Colin. I'm sorry. I told you. I told you. Can you tell me... Calvin gave me this one. What's a Canadian's favorite vitamin? Vitamin A? Vitamin A? Vitamin A? <laughs> so, but what is the best vitamin for being a Christian? Hmm? Just be one. Just be one. Just be one. I'm amazed at you kids and some of the uh, things that you do every day just to be a Christian. This is something that Ella made on her 3D. She has a 3D pen that she got for um, for Christmas. She made a, she made Jesus on the cross. Can you show it to the rest of them? So there are things that you can do every day. You know what else you can do? You can be a friend to someone. It says right here, what's the best vitamin for friendship? Be one. Be one, just like a Christian. See, God would never ask you to do something that he's not willing to do himself. Can I get an amen? God is not willing to ask you to do something that he's not willing to do himself. And that's what's so amazing, that he came to this earth, that he sent his son Jesus to show us the way. He is the true Christian. Can I get an amen? And we can be like him, okay? So are you ready to receive your vitamins? Ella has hooked us up today with some, some, some B1s. Is that what this is? You don't, look, you don't look too happy right now. She does not look too happy. So are you going to be one? Are you going to be one? Are you going to be one? I know you love these, Colin. Here you go, baby. Here you go, baby. That's, that, that, they're not vitamins. Parents, don't freak out. These are just Ella's Tic Tacs. And she, <laughs> and she is not happy with me right now. Here you go, baby. Here you go, baby. I'll buy you a whole new pack, okay? But what can we do? We can be one. We can just be a Christian, plain and simple. There's small acts that we can do every day. Remember the old saying, practice what you preach? That was directed at preachers because they heard what they said on Sunday, but they saw something completely different on Monday. Amen? So let us do both. Let us be one. Does anybody want to read the scripture for me this morning? And I'll get y'all out of here. Call in. Who did it last Sunday? Is it Will? You want to do it this week? Okay. Come on down. All right. This is Philippians 2, 5, 3 through 5. You ready? Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Colin, do you want to close us out or does anybody want to close us out? Will, you want me to do it? All right, let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for these kids. They truly are our future. They are a bright and shining star. Lord, fill them with your Holy Spirit and fill their leaders now as they go and become better disciples of your son, Jesus. For it's in your name we pray. And everybody said, amen. prayers. Do we have any praises we need to lift up this morning? Yes. New family. New family. Amen. You want to give a little background on that? We have... <laughs> Not to embarrass him too bad, but welcome, Simone. <laughs> welcome. We're glad you're here. Any other praises we need to lift up? Prayer concerns? Dennis? I just uh, recently heard that Kim Conaway, uh, Play's wife, 
her dad has cancer. So we need to remember him. Okay. What's this? So Kim Conaway's dad, what is his name? Bill Kelton. Bill Kelton, okay. Yes, sir. Amen. Thank you, Ed. So for church closures and your mom, we'll be in prayer for, for those, okay? It's a sad thing when any church closes because we know there's enough people to, to fill churches, but we'll be in prayer for that. Anybody else have one? <coughs> Patsy. Okay. Any more unspoken? All right. Don't see any online. Any more before we go to the Lord in prayer? Uh, John. Okay. So John's mom is going to have that surgery on Wednesday. We'll be in special prayer for that, okay? Keep us posted if you don't mind. <laughs> All right. Mark, I mentioned an unspoken for a friend of mine a couple of weeks ago. I want to lift that one up again. Okay. And at the same time, let's, let's be in prayer for our country and the world with everything that's going on. Yes, sir, absolutely. There's one day at a time. Let's just lift up all those that, uh, you know, are unable to come or not here today. Let's just reach out to those folks. Um, you know, there's too many to name, but just all those shut-ins. And I just want to mention them by name and lift them up in my heart. It's just all those that are that are not here with us today. All right, anybody else? All right. All right, it's time to take it to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Gracious God, you are an awesome God. You are our Father God. 
You are our creator, God. You are our sustainer, God. You are our healer, God. You are our, our El Shaddai. You are our Jehovah Rapha, the Hebrew name for God who heals. And Lord, we ask that you would heal those hearts that have been lifted up to you now, those ailments, those concerns, that you would be with all of them and overwhelm them with your Holy Spirit, that they might know that no matter what happens, no matter what goes on, you are with us. That is the gospel truth, that God himself stepped down and experienced this world and died on the cross and opened the gates of heaven to us. Lord Jesus, you tore the veil of the temple in two. We don't have to go to anyone. We can go straight to you, our Redeemer, our friend, and our Savior. So Lord, may that be the answer to all these folks' prayer, that they might know that even if the outcome is different from what they expect, that you are with them. Lord, we thank you for the excitement, for the, the feeling of your Holy Spirit in our hearts. And we pray that we can reach this community and let them know that they too can come in and experience the goodness and the blessing of a relationship with you and a relationship with the body of Christ as we are in relationship with each other to go through life together. Sustain us, Lord, bless us, and help our church to reach those people. We lift all these things up to you, O oh God. You know our hearts. We lift those unspokens up to you. And Lord, we know not how to pray. Some days we're just talking to you, but that's all you want us to do. But now, Lord, we have this chance, this opportunity to give back to you that prayer that you gave your disciples so long ago. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now for our ushers to come forward for this morning's offering. Let us pray. Father, we're so blessed to have you. Thank you for everything. Help us to be a good reflection. Bless this offering and everybody here. Amen. Amen. seated but not for too long right Kathy That's right. <laughs>
because we are going to get your participation here in a moment. I need to make up for those slides earlier, so we're going to do it upright. <laughs> Kathy's got our anthem for us every time I feel the Spirit. And we're request, requesting after I sing the first verse that you, you guys stand and join, join in and act like you got the Spirit. Can we do that? We'll give you a key. <laughs> yeah. Because I feel the Spirit today. I pray that you do. And I pray that this song will help you feel that joy that is contagious. Amen, Kathy? All right, let's do it. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I Feel the Spirit moving in my heart. I will pray upon the mountain. My Lord spoke out of his mouth, came fire and smoke. I looked around me, it looked so fine. Till last, my Lord, if fall was mine. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit. Moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. All right, we need you to stand with us and join in and put those hands together. Come on now. You got to feel the Spirit. Warm it up now. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Up on the mountain, my Lord spoke. Out of His mouth came fire and smoke. I looked around me, it looked so fine, till I asked my Lord if all was mine. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. The Jordan River is chilly and cold. It chills the body, but not the soul. There is but one train upon this track. It runs to heaven and right back with those hands together. It's every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Amen. Give yourself some clap of praise. Give God some praise. I love it. Love to see y'all up and praising God. You may be seated. Now the time for our scripture. If you're able to, please rise for our scripture reading. It's found in the Gospel of John, the second chapter, verses 1 through 12. Up and down, up and down, right? <laughs> On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. And Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother asked him, Do they have no more wine? Woman, why do you want to involve me? Jesus replied, My hour has not yet come. His mother said to his servant, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood the six stone water jars the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to his servants, fill the jars with water. So the, they filled them, brought them to the brim. Then he told them, draw some water out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it came from, though the servants had drawn the water new. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone bring out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine, after the guests have been too, too, had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. 
what Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first signs, first of the signs which he revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother and brothers and disciples. They stayed there for a few days. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. Let's have prayer together. Gracious God, we are so thankful for your church, for your word. We are so thankful for all that you have done for us. We are so thankful that you make all things new. Lord, this is not just about turning water into wine. This is your transforming presence. How people's lives are transformed when they are in your presence. So Lord, we ask that each person here, that someone online watching or someone yet to be reached by us will be transformed through the presence and the power of you. We ask all these things in your mighty name, and all of God's people said, Amen. We're still in the Gospel of John, and we're moving right along, Amen. The Gospel of John records Jesus' first miracle, and it's a little bit scandalous, isn't it? He turned water into wine, oh no. <laughs> now back in those days, Water, well, let's, let's reverse that. Wine was like water to us now, right? <laughs> we go to the tap, we get water. Uh, it's pure, it's clean. We know it's healthy, we know it's okay. Uh, they didn't have that luxury back then. They, didn't, they had to draw water from a well that often set. Uh, you remember the, the woman at the well? It often set for a long time, and it uh, you know, might be stale, it might not be pure. So wine was there uh, in many times, obviously a celebratory drink, but it had a little bit of a different, different meaning back then. Uh, what's the old saying about, about this miracle? It's similar to the story about, uh, I actually had a Baptist minister tell me this. I, when I asked him what the difference was between Methodist and Baptist, and he said, this is, I'll, I can tell you the pastor's name, rest his soul, it was, it was Larry from across the street, Pastor Larry Boswell. I said, Larry, what is the difference? He said, well, Mark, you know, you didn't know how to take Larry sometimes. You didn't know if he was being serious or not. Well, he said, well, Mark, the way I see it is Methodists might actually speak to each other in the liquor store, okay? <laughs> Baptists are going to run the other way. But in Jesus' day, this was quite the miracle. Jesus and his disciples were there. This was a wedding celebration. This was a great time. This was life. Life was happening right before us. We have a great uh, coincidence in our church and in our church family. This scripture really stood out to me uh, this week because we have two upcoming weddings that I know about. <laughs> and ironically, you know, sometimes God... Uh, has a sense of humor, or it's a God incidence, or a coincidence. Uh, February 24th uh, is a day in my mind. You have those days that are in your mind. You're like, okay, what's going on on this day? Where am I supposed to be this day? I usually ask Melissa, where am I supposed to be on Saturday, uh, you know, February 1st, or whatever? And she'll tell me. But February 24th, uh, we have Bryce's wedding coming up. Bryce Mathis is getting married. I'm not inviting the whole church. I know they sent out invitations. But we also have on that same day, J.C. Connor's uh, wedding shower here at our church. You probably caught that, John, didn't you? It finally dawned on me yesterday that those two things are happening at the same time. And J.C. was kind of freaking out. She said, oh, no, because I really want everybody to be able to go to both if, they're, you know, if they can. And J.C. looked at the invitation for Bryce and said, praise God, because ours is at 2 p.m., and I think theirs is at 4.30 p.m. So maybe some can attend both. Wouldn't that be wonderful? And, and we have a gymnastics meet. 8 a.m., so maybe we can attend. That's wonderful. Praise God. But see how God works it all out. He works it all, and that's the whole point of this scripture, is that when Jesus is in the mix, <laughs> okay, 
It's not so much about water and wine. People like to focus on that and say, hey, you see that was... I've had people tell me, well, that was Jesus' first miracle preacher. It must be okay. And I said, okay, I mean, you know, that's between you and God. Nothing wrong with a little bit here and there, you know, all in moderation, right? But, but it's really about when Jesus is in the mix, when he is present, when, when you go to him, he will take care of it. He will transform it. He will change us. He will bless us. He will abundantly pour his blessings into us. Can God's church say amen? It's the truth. Can God's church say amen? We have to know where to go. He is the source. Isn't that amazing? Jesus is the source. His own mother knew where to go. <laughs> she knew where to go. That's what is so amazing to me. She approached Jesus. She, in, she was an intercessory for someone else. She was an intercessory for someone else. This past uh, Friday morning, and this past Tuesday morning, we had to really ask for Jesus' presence to be with us. You remember it was a digital <laughs> learning day? <laughs> you remember that? Schools were closed. It was a digital learning day. There was definitely some digital going on, but there was very little learning going on. But Jesus was there. I felt him telling me, these kids are not going to be this size forever. They're going to be gone. Cherish this moment. Cherish this time. So every time we go somewhere, don't take it for granted. Look for Jesus. Look around this room and say, this may never be again. You never know. This may never be again. Thank you, God, for this moment. But the upper room on Friday morning from a guy named Joshua Sela from Kenya of all places. He was talking about John 15 and the, the vine and the branches. The vine clings to something in order to grow, in order to thrive and bear fruit. A climbing plant depends on a strong central vine and it requires occasional pruning. Doesn't that sound like you're... Your, your walk with Jesus, your spiritual life, it's a constant pruning. It's like, Lord, I'm not supposed to go through this if I'm a Christian. And he says, I have a greater purpose in mind. I prune those that God has chosen. That's what Jesus' words are in John 15. A plant's nutrients flow from the vine to its branches. And God's divine love flows from Christ to us. We must cling to Christ for he is the vine. We are merely the branches. He said, unless you remain in me and I in you, you can do nothing. Isn't that amazing? That came just a few chapters later after Jesus and his miraculous change of water into wine. Jesus changes things. If you get close to him, if you come in contact with him, I'm here to tell you that if you truly have an experience of him, you will never be the same. The Gospel of John, that's his whole purpose. And it stretches all the way through chapter 12 where he wants us to believe. He says at the very end of his Gospel in chapter 20 that Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ the son of God and that by believing you may have life in his name that's the whole point as if we need another sign as if John 3:16 isn't enough for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. John 3.17 says that God did not send his son into the world to judge the world. But John 3.18 says that if we do not believe in God's son Jesus that we fall under God's judgment. I don't want to be in that place. I want to be under the protection of Christ. The blanket of Christ. In the behind Christ as he's my representative before God. Can I get an amen? That's the place that I want to be. So there's so many reasons to believe in this man Jesus. But the one reason is that he makes all things new. 
He saves our soul. Of course, there's more than one reason. He saves our soul. He uh, gets us to heaven. He is our security. He is our sanctity. He is our Savior. He is our Lord. He makes all things new. I was substitute teaching this past week. You know, you don't intend to do that. <laughs> or you intend to do it one day a week and it becomes three days a week. You know, because they'll call on you. But I approached it a little bit differently this week. I said, this isn't something that I have to do. This is something that I get to do. Okay? And these kids, I was at Temple Middle School. One of them said, you're Will's dad. And I'm like, how do you know Will? <laughs> this is a middle school, you know? But they also had seen my name, and they knew I was the preacher up here. And one girl asked me how, do you, how to get to heaven. Isn't that amazing? And she said, she said well, if I do bad things, do you, do you think I'm going to hell? And I said, I, I'm not the judge. I'm only the witness. But I can tell you how not, to, how to be sure, how to be absolutely sure that you don't have to worry about that. You put your full faith and trust in Jesus Christ and what He has done on the cross and His death and resurrection. The rest, God will take care of. But this, out of nowhere, this young lady asked me how to get to heaven. I just felt the presence of God. I was like, whoa, okay. That's why I was supposed to be here today. So don't think that you don't make a difference in the lives of others. Look at Jesus' mother. Apparently, she was in charge of the wedding, or that's the way it looks, doesn't it? It looks as if she was playing a significant role in the wedding. It was probably some of her relatives or something that were getting married, but she knew right where to go. You can be an intercessory for someone else. And Jesus, I think, wants us to join him. He wants us to work with him. He wants to bless us. He wants to change what we consider empty and old and, you know, something we do out of habit. He wants to transform it and give it new life. Now, Will couldn't get away with saying that, could he? But Jesus could. <laughs> When he said to his mother, woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. Now, if Will said that, he might get a little backhand, excuse me. But Jesus was even reminding his own mother, Mary, that he knew his purpose. He knew where he was headed. God's mission for him was to go to the cross. So we had Mother Mary, but in this story, we also have an amazing transition where she becomes believer Mary. Did you notice that? She goes from Mother Mary to believer Mary. Whoa, this dude is the Savior of the world. This guy is God in the flesh. This guy can make all things right. This guy can bring abundance. This guy can get me out of this jam. This guy can perform a miracle. One of the greatest... <laughs> Statements of faith came from Mary right here in verse 5. Did you notice what she told the servants? Do whatever he tells you. <laughs> Amen? Wow, what a great witness. Someone says, what should I do? Do whatever Jesus tells you. <laughs> he is the only one with the authority, with the power, with the purpose to change lives, to make something out of nothing. So Mary went from mother to believer, and I ask ourselves the same question as we go into this new year. What can we uh, see Jesus doing that can transform the old and make it new? If there's something that we think we've always known, have we really known it? Have we really put Jesus at the center of it? Have we really given it to Him? That's something that I want to do this year, 
is to let Jesus work in our church. Because I'll admit, I'm bad. I'm bad about trying to do things myself. Can somebody say amen? I'm bad about not asking for help. Can I get an amen? I'm bad about, you know, I'll die under a cause before I ask for help. Is that Jesus' plan? No. So I'm here to tell you, I, you know, I don't want to step away or step back, but I want to see God's people be the hands and feet of Jesus. I know that he has the right people here at Temple Methodist Church. Can I get an amen? I know he does. We wouldn't be here together in this moment if he didn't have the right people. So if there is something that God has laid on your heart, say, Mark, get out of my way. (laughs) I'm about to knock you down because I want to do this for Jesus. I want to see our church succeed. I don't want to see Mark succeed. I don't want to be the one that, you know, oh, he, you know, he, I don't want to be a control freak. I want to see God and Jesus work in our church. I know that can get an amen. I just want to see him right in the mix, right in the midst of all the things that we do and just let him work. Just watch Jesus work. And I'm excited to see what he will do in our church. I'm going to name that and claim that. In one of the greatest verses in the Bible, in Isaiah 55, 1, it says these words, Come everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come and eat. Come and buy wine and milk without money and without price. This is what Jesus is doing. He's taking our nothing our little that we have to offer him, like these folks in this wedding, and he can bless it, he can change it, he can bring something new, he can purify those purification jars, he can fill them to the brim with blessings. Because when he touches it, when he blesses it, when he gives it, truly, It is not only the very best wine, but the very best that we could ever hope for. Can all of God's people say amen? Amen. Let's be an intercessory. Let's believe that Jesus is working. Let's pray for somebody else this week. Pray for somebody that you hadn't seen at church lately or pray for that person that you would like to invite to church or pray for that person and their situation. I'll never forget that little lady who used to come to Joan's barbecue, and I think she still comes, doesn't she, Martha, to y'all's Monday Bible study at the Senior Center. What is her name? Not Sue Brockman. You know who I'm talking about. Y'all used to go off. Francis. Francis. Do you remember, I don't know if you were there that day, Martha, but at one of the Joan's barbecues breakfast, breakfasts, she came up to me and she said, Mark, are you an intercessory? And I said, what? (laughs) I said, I've been called a lot of things, but I don't think I've been called that. But she believed in the power of intercessory prayer that we can petition God for something to happen. And so what Mary did here, she was the go-between. You might be that person this week that brings somebody into the very presence of Christ or brings people into your church or brings a blessing into this world so God can use you for this mighty purpose. Can all of God's people say amen? Amen. Amen. If you do need prayer at the end of the service, the altar is always open. And we are here for you if you need prayer. Our closing hymn this morning is hymn number 263 in the brown or on the wall behind me. 263. Come thou fount of every blessing Tune my heart to sing thy grace Streams of mercy never ceasing Calls for songs of loudest praise Teach me some melodious sonnet Sung by flaming tongues above 
praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of God's redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I'm come, and I hope by thy good measure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to lead the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. thought we were just doing two verses. Here's my heart, Lord, me from danger, interpose his precious blood. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Our acolytes are taking the light of Christ in and taking it out into the world. And will you follow their lead and do the same? Amen. Amen.